Welcome to the Winning Edge Investments Podcast. Winning Edge Investments provides industry-leading horse racing and sports betting tips, ratings and education, enabling you to invest intelligently and treat your betting like a business. Go to www.winningedgeinvestments.com to learn more about how you can start to supercharge your betting bank immediately. Treat your betting like a business and invest intelligently with Winning Edge Investments. You're with Gareth Hall on this Friday morning here, hopefully enjoying your Cox Plate Eve. And it's time now, thanks to Winning Edge Investments, tips and ratings for racing and sports to catch up with Dean Evans. Hello, Dino. Hey, Gareth. How are you going? I am well, mate. Um, love this time of the year. Everybody does. But this Cox Plate has got so much intrigue this year. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I know one thing, that Pride of Jenny will be in front and, and she'll be a long way in front, I reckon, halfway down that back straight. It's whether she can hang on or not. And I'm just having a look at the market right now with Bet365 for the great race tomorrow afternoon. And you've got Prognosis, the favourite. He's at 3.40. Pride of Jenny at 4.40. V and Sistina is at 4.40 as well. So equal second favourites. Broad signing at 7. And then Mr. Brightside at 8.50. Then we go to Docklands at 17. Evaporate at 20 to 1. Kovalika into $29. And then Rural Patronage is the outsider at $41. How do you read this year's Cox Plate, mate? Yeah, look, one of the premier group one races on the world racing calendar. The Winks win it four years in a row. Quite interestingly, you take Winks out of the equation the last six years, five of the winners have been imports. Romantic Warrior, Lee to Sir, the Dragon Ace, that arrest in Adelaide, all from overseas. Um, in the last 13 years, only one Geldings won, uh, five Entires and, and six Mares and, and a Colt. Um, every winner's been the first three at the last two starts. Uh, and no horse has won when they've gone backwards um, as in lost the position in the run at their last start. So a horse like Pride of Jenny who led and got run down last start, that usually doesn't find the one of the cox plates. Usually something that uh, that runs on from the back, um, which is interesting historically. Like you say, Pride of Jenny will lead very, very comfortably. There's a lot of jockeying and nonsense, I think, going around in the, in the media at the moment. They're all playing games around how it's going to run, but Pride of Jenny's only hope is to try to do what she did in the Queen Elizabeth and hope they don't chase her. Uh, Royal Patronage and Mr. Brightside will do the chasing. I think Evaporate and Broadsiding will sort of sit, sit in midfield. So Via Sestina and Kovalika uh, worse in midfield. And I'd say Prognosis and Docklands will be out the back in, in what will probably be the, the best position to be in. Um, look, I, I'm just not convinced that Private Jenny's going quite as well as she was last prep. You know, she won the CM, but she was getting the staggers late, I thought. And then the King Charles, uh, you know, again, she was sort of getting the staggers late. and. And she sort of had that my Oberon, uh, you know, run right up to her and unfortunately didn't go past her. But uh, um, it was just a bit of a question mark whether she's done quite as well this prep. Then you look at, um, you know, Mr. Brightside, uh, last two 2,000 metre runs he's had with Friday Jenny in the race, he's been beaten five lengths and nine lengths from Via Sistina. And the two, you know, she's won three group ones from five starts in Australia, but the two races that Friday Jenny ran and she's beaten seven lengths both times. So I just don't think they're the kinds of horses that. I like that kind of race shape. So, uh, look, the one I've got right on top is, is Prognosis, quite clearly. It's just a you know, really high class entire run second at Group 1 level twice in Hong Kong to Romantic Warrior. The last one was just unbelievable run to miss the start by about five lengths and, and get beat about a head by Romantic Warrior in a multiple Group 2 and Group uh, 2000 meter winner in Japan and, and Group 1 plays get a imports have an excellent record in this race. I just think he's the one to beat. Um, I think Docklands can run a big race uh, around second. You know, in the Queen Anne Group won at Royal Ascot, and then Stevens and the Judmont International has beaten a long way, but that's that's probably the strongest Group One of the year. Uh, the horse that ran fourth and was beaten about eight lengths in that race, then won the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe uh, subsequently. So, uh, although I think Docklands is a miler, uh, I, I do think he, he can run a race, and, and I think Broadsiding, um, you know, I'm concerned they might ride him a bit too close. I, I think if they actually rode him cold. Uh, he's also a chance of figuring, but I've, I, I'm really keen on prognosis here. He's just a high-quality horse, and um, uh, and I think he's going to be really hard to beat. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's prognosis, and I'm a fan of Pride of Jenny, as you well know. I think it's I think one of those two will win. Um, yeah, depending yeah. on who wants to chase Pride of Jenny, I think someone will chase her. They won't let her do what she did in the Queen Elizabeth, and then I think Laney 
with the way that they've been practicing to get him out of the gates, I think they'd be hoping that he settles a little bit closer than than last from that draw anyway. So if he does yeah, settle maybe. in the field, he'll be hard to beat. But it's I, I think so. It's interesting though, like, you know, you look at the horses like Chill Wolf and, uh, and Cascadian and the ones that sort of run prior to Jenny Down, but, um, you know, the further back you are, it quite often be a help. Yep. Like you look at Sangirl last week, just, it, it, you know, usually as a devastating turn of foot, and it was just too close, and it couldn't couldn't replicate that. So yeah. she just she brings this, you know, intrigue and completely different race shape to what we're used to in Australia prior to June. That's what makes it so exciting, and it's going to be a great cost plate because of that reason. Yeah, hundred percent. The Group One Spring Champion Stakes. Having a look at the market here, you got Swift Falcon three hundred and sixty, El Castello three hundred and eighty, Henline at four hundred and eighty. Harlem Queen at six fifty, and then Pleasure Artist at fifteen. Ray Queen at sixteen. Firm agreement does come to Melbourne at nineteen, then Juvana at nineteen, and then big prices for the rest. So um, you can take out the first agreement, of course, there at the nineteen dollar quote because he will be in Melbourne there for the Vars tomorrow. What are you doing here with this Group One in Sydney for the three year olds, Dean? Yeah, look. The, the... Usually pretty straightforward with the form race, the, the spring champion. The nine of the winners come out of the gloaming and three have come out of the flight stakes. Um, and 12 of the last 13 winners ran either first or second at the last start. So it's usually those form horses you know, that are going well from the lead up. Uh, there's not much speed here at all. Uh, Noises should lead. El Casello is going to get a really, really nice trail. Uh, and you've got sort of Harlem Queen will probably push forward from out wide. Duke holds in the fence. And then you know the rest are going to be sort of uh, further back from there. Uh, I think El Costello is really, really hard to beat. You know, he won all three starts this prep. Um, was very strong, winning the Gloaming last start. The ideal lead up for this, Josh Park ticking is a, is a big plus. Uh, a lot of the good jockeys in, uh, in Melbourne. So um, I think it just maps perfectly. He's going to be extremely hard to beat. Um, I thought one of the bit of value might be Pleasure Artist. Ran home really strong with the second of the Dolphin Fire last start. Sort of fresh filly on the scene. Um, and one of those things going to run now. Uh, um, you know, could run a surprising race, but again, just very keen on El Costello to get that perfectly. It's just going to be very, very hard to beat. Beautiful. Should we take the nine dollars for the Derby then? Uh, yeah. Look, I, I think um, he's my castle Vecchio. Uh, um, you know, Anthony's uh, won a Derby with five and a half star. Um, yeah, look, I, I think he's, he's a handy type, but I just think he's perfectly suited here. And, and to be honest, I haven't got a horse from the Derby at the moment that I'm keen on, so it's yeah. probably the one. And what about you got one for us to kick off Cox Plate Day at the Valley? Yeah, look, I just thought uh, in the first uh, Katsu, uh, the horse has been jumping out really, really well around the lights. So we'll beat V8 and uh, Southport Tycoon, the jump out, and then was right around sort of Mornington Glory. Uh, it was obviously put up a Group 1 run, so... Uh, Graham B's got a 40% uh, positive profit on turnover on Ferrell horses, and I think Katsu is going to be very hard to beat. And there was also another uh, filly in that race, uh, Mayor Lynn Picker at $23. Who, if you watch the, uh, you watch her first up run where she ran last really closely, she was sort of just about to start making a run and got cut out, and the rider just stopped riding. Uh, and she's run some really good races before as well. Uh, but I think Katsu maps perfectly. I think he'll win, and, and Lynn Picker up $23 is not a bad roughing. Big weekend for the punters out there. If we want to get involved with winning in, winning edge investments, how do we go about doing that, Dino? Uh, yeah, just hop, to hop on to winningedgeinvestments.com, have a look at all the options. Uh, feel free to contact us if you've got any questions and if people uh, check SEN and uh, they'll get a 50% ongoing lifetime discount. We had plenty of luck with uh, Alain Nepotina last week and <clears throat> would have been an absolute fill-up of my eyebrow and I'd managed yes. to, uh, <laughs> to win last week, but um, we still had a good day in the life. Love your work, Dino. We appreciate it, mate. Enjoy a big weekend of racing once again. Cheers, Gareth. Good on you. At Winning Edge Investments, our team of highly skilled expert analysts and full-time professional punters review the data, crunch the figures, assess the best betting opportunities, and deliver them to your phone via our app and your email inbox in real time so you profit. Go to www.winningedgeinvestments.com. Look at our membership options. Make your choice and enter the promo code PODCAST to receive a special 25% discount on your first membership just for listening. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T in capital letters for a 25% ongoing discount on your first membership. Treat your betting like a business and invest intelligently with Winning Edge Investments.